So one of the basic tenets of shamanism is that everything has a vibration and therefore everything, everything has consciousness and everything is alive. And so, um, So we ride the waves that our first three speakers have all addressed, and we, we, it, you know, it's it's a roller coaster ride, you know, um, and being in the physical, being human, is magnificent and gruesome because we feel everything, and we're at the densest part of our our spectrum of existence, where existence where resistance and growth are felt most strenuously in the physical so we have to give ourselves a break and go oh yeah I'm, I'm in a body this is what it feels like and i some of these feelings are uncomfortable and confusing and, and irritating and i wish i wasn't feeling this <laughs> And all of it is, as has been said, in service to the momentum of our evolution, that we are all growing and we can choose, we have, we have free will, so we can choose the quality of our experience. But as Paula presented the purpose of this gathering in relationship to the upcoming election, um, much as Ogan has pointed out, you know, if we focus our, our, our attention down to that narrow point of the election, we're putting enormous pressure on the timing. It's three weeks, it's two weeks, it's one week. Oh my God, it's coming. And is this election? And what if the wrong person gets elected? Okay, somebody's gonna be disappointed. So, so for me, how do I approach, how do I find equilibrium in these amazing times? I, I was so moved in the beginning of the quarantine to realize that all around the world, human beings were making their best efforts to isolate and, 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 uh, and do the best that we each could do to assure each other's and our own well-being. And I thought, wow. This is, this is a worldwide collective practicum of love thy neighbor as thyself. And I was like, this is intense and it's wonderful that you, everyone in the world, to the degree that I would know that, uh, is doing it. Um, so I took heart in that and I, I have been impressed by so much of how our fellow humans are responding to um, the, uh, the COVID-19 and the quarantine. Uh, and in America, we have a simultaneous um, experience of a reckoning on our history, which is rising up out of the shadows and in our face and saying, you know, if we're going to heal, if we're going to heal, we have to understand what we're healing. And we're healing, we're healing 401 years of repression and abuse and brutality. Um, and that's not gonna be easy. Um, and we see um, all sorts of aspects of, of those elements in our culture coming up for um, assessment. So how do I find equilibrium? I, I, because I'm as reactive as anybody. I can have my really bad days. I can say things. And I always add the caveat after I've said it is, I used to be a nice person. Um, because, you know, you just want to smack some people some days. Um, and it's okay to have that feeling. That's our heart saying, this is mo a moral outrage. This offends my spirit. And we have to, I teach acting, I run a theater, we have to acknowledge the emotions, but we don't have to take action in, in those emotions. In, where do I go? I try to remember that we all possess a sacred treasure. 
we are love. Love is our treasure. And, and the only thing that can diminish our experience of that core existence within us, which is love, the only thing that can diminish that in us is ourselves. And so how do I find my way back to my loving core? And when I can, and with the help of the guides, the guardians, the angels, and the archangels, and all of our cosmic cousins, and all of the dear people who come together in sacred circle and help to hold me up, I can find that place in me that is unconditional love. I don't have to manufacture it. I just have to bring my conscious attention back to where that abides in me. And from that place, I can look at every situation much as Ogan described it and Rebecca described it. That's my fulcrum. The love is my fulcrum. And I can look with compassion and I can look with expectation of healing and anticipation of resolution uh, from that place of unconditional love. And that, that is where I go in order to um, release myself from my reactive ego self and my culturalized self, myself that, you know, has a certain identity that leans this way or that. But, you know, I call myself a liberal. And, you know, what the hell does that mean? Um, <laughs> in it, it has a lot of imperfections hidden, okay? So we have to take those broad identifiers that give us comfort and sort of a shield I can hide behind the back. Oh, I'm a liberal, you know, I can feel good about myself. But I also participate in this brutal culture. I pay my taxes, I, I support the machine, and I have, to, I have to admit that I'm part of the problem. And that's not to criticize myself or make myself less than, it's to say if we want to heal the whole, as Ogan said, we have to heal the individual wounds and misperceptions uh, and the distorted beliefs that we have formed from our own personal histories and from the things we have been taught and the things we've experienced. And so for me, it's love. Love is the fulcrum. Love is the gift. Love is the reality. And through that lens, I can face even the most out of balance person with a sense of compassion and hope and, and positive anticipation for healing. So that's what I have to say. Mm -hmm.